Hey, how's it going? Uh, this is Brian Allen here. My favorite art and design podcast is Adventures in Design, and I was lucky enough to do an interview with Mark Brickey recently on my creation of Gritty, the new Philadelphia Flyers mascot. Here's a quick video of me inking my Gritty fan art piece uh, that's available on prints, and I have just a couple real quick snippets of the interview I did with Mark. For the full interview, please visit AIDpodcast.com or follow them on YouTube. Thanks. Brian Allen, father of Gritty. Welcome to Creep Week. Welcome to Adventures in Design, sir. How you doing, Mark? Thanks so much for having me. Man, you hit one of those wild moments where you just got hired to do a job. We're all just doing jobs. We're all just doing work. But... I feel like every time I hit upload on a podcast or every time that you do a design or illustration project, you're always just hoping that you'll hit that new thing in this world known as viral, right? Like maybe this will be the project that gets me discovered. People find out about me. People start talking about me, but it's not always the dream that we think it is, right? Like at times being quote unquote discovered can turn into a nightmare, right? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I've never been involved in anything this big. Most of the projects that I work on day to day are for small or medium sized businesses. The bread and butter of our business is just working with smaller businesses, medium sized businesses. And then, you know, a couple times a year, maybe every few months, we have a, a bigger job come along. Yeah. So when I got, I got this email that just simply said, it was just one sentence and just said, you know, do you have time to do some concept artwork on a very tight timeline? Give me a call. And then I, you know, that didn't sound unusual, but I scroll down and the signature is from some dude from the flyers. Right. So, you know, being doubting myself, I I pretty much had to look up, like, is there a minor league team called the flyers? (laughs) Is Is this this the Philadelphia flyers? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Not, you know, the Norway Flyers. But, right. Uh, a- anyway, um, so I, I called them immediately. And the way they were exploring this job is they knew they needed a new mascot. Yeah. But they already had some in-house concepts because right. they have an in-house art department. But they wanted to reach out to try to get like kind of a different, edgier take on it. Mm-hmm. So they saw some of my artwork for a previous mascot that I had done and – they hired me to just do the first stage, which was just creating a series of concept sketches. Yeah. And when I entered the job, I knew that there was a good chance that if they didn't see anything they liked, then that'd be the end of it. They right. wouldn't move forward to the next stage. So um, I, they asked for four concept sketches. They gave me very little direction, but what I did was I spent two days just drawing as many sketches as I could in those two days. And uh, so I drew 25 completely different concepts of this mascot. Uh, I explored like dragons, bulldogs, bulls, like a bully character, even a bat at one point, yeah. which was actually one of my favorites. But that's the fine line of the Philadelphia Flyers, right? Like it's a... Uh... I would say it's an aggressive city, like the citizens of Philly, you know, they'll turn on you on a second. Like, you know, we've talked about several yeah. times on the yeah. show. These are the people that threw snowballs at Santa Claus. Like they're snowballs at Santa Claus. They're, yeah. a, they're a rowdy crowd. I, I told my friend, I called him up when I got this job and I knew he was a huge Flyers fan. Yeah. And uh, I sent him a message and then he immediately called me and he's like, dude, they throw, they throw snowballs at Santa Claus, man. You got to be careful. And uh, he helped me actually through the whole process. He helped me a little bit in kind of, I, I would throw ideas at him and he would come back at me on things he thought would work and, and wouldn't. The reason why I thought Gritty was so well done is that it, you accidentally or purposefully, you stumble, stumbled onto something that was quite amazing. It looked familiar. It felt like something from the seventies. It felt like something from maybe Jim Henson. Like there was a moment in the seventies where they used a lot of puppets to do children's programming, like great space coaster and, you know, McDonald's used them for all their mascots and you know, the Muppets was a huge thing. And so it had this familiar 
background monster vibe to it. Because no, of course, the uh, costume company uh, called Character Translations Incorporated had a huge part in this. You sure, know, they they took my turnaround drawing and and they added some of the coolest features like the. Uh, the googly eyes was the all, googly all their eyes idea. Is phenomenal, and the fact that his waistline is like a hula hoop, where it can yeah. sort of move around in an in a unhuman way. Um, they knew going into this that there might be a lot of pushback, uh, and it's funny what you said about the kids finding him creepy because they did a ton of uh, of testing. They, I think, they showed it to like six hundred kids or something at the beginning and the kids loved them. See, that's so parents. I, that, that's the parents in today's world were like, <laughs> I don't understand this. It's like everybody's trying to protect yeah. their kids from being kids. Kids get it. Kids always do. Yeah. Kids understand the world better than adults do. It's the bullshit that happens to you from the time that you're 13 to 23 that makes you a horrible person. And then I started looking at all the hatred around it and I'm like, oh, they've struck gold because anything that can make that much noise in the shadow of Trump, in the shadow of 2018, like anything that can break through is amazing. It's got to be this or a Beauty and the Beast story like Ariana Grande and Pete Davidson. Like those are the only <laughs> things that yeah. break through. And you got into that crazy rarefied air of catching the culture, capturing the moment. And a friend sent me a thing and I clicked on it. And then another friend sent me another thing and I clicked on it and it, it just became apparent that the reaction was not good. Yeah. Uh, and it, it was not good. So eventually I ended up on the flyers, uh, Facebook or Twitter feed or something. And you read a couple of the first comments and you think, ah, okay, he didn't like it. You know, maybe the next guy will, but it just kept snowballing. And um, it, <laughs> I haven't felt like that since I was in high school, like being dumped or something, but yeah. it was, it was almost, it was like a whole city was dumping me at once. How were you able to turn the corner and to take this as a badge of honor and not just let it make you want to be an ostrich and bury your head in the sand? Yeah, man, it, that was definitely my first reaction, but, but that died down fast. Uh, that really was the first couple days. Mm -hmm. And then I started noticing like a huge momentum shift. Uh, and I think that followed when um when gritty went out on the ice the first time and, and fell on his ass yeah uh and then grabbed the t-shirt cannon from a guy and started firing shirts at people yeah i i think that's when people kind of realize like okay this dude's here to stay and he's kind of fun it was at that point that i started receiving uh lots of fan art from people um so people were sending me pictures of cakes that they made. Uh, some woman drew Gritty on an Etch-A-Sketch. Oh, and that's took a great. Photo. It was like a beautiful, that's it's great. all she does, They're like these beautiful yeah. portraits. And uh, th then, then the tattoos started, um, and now you're seeing Halloween costumes. So it, it really only, the horror for me really only lasted about two to three days. But I bet it was a rough two or three days. I mean, really putting myself in your situation – that would be pretty brutal because you don't know how the trolls are going to come after you. You don't know how you might get dragged into this. And like reputation as a freelancer, that's all you have.